Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm back for Tailored Motor TV. Sorry for the long break. So many business issues to fix before I could come back to technology. I spent a lot of time researching different manufacturing technologies for laminated cores. Basically it's punching versus laser cutting and I want to share that with you. Now why do we need a laminated core. If we have an iron core with a coil around it and we start sending current through that coil, uh, we will induce eddy currents inside the core. Uh, so if we make that core a stack of thin sheet metal layers, the current cannot flow because we have some insulation between the, the layers and so the AD current cannot go around which avoids that we have ohmic losses due to that AD current which are just produced heat in, in our core. So every transformer, every electric motor is, is made out of such a laminated core. In our electric motor, if we look, this is the rotor, this is the front, the back uh, covers, ball bearing here, and that is our laminated core, our stack, and our coil goes around like this for one pole, and then you have it symmetrical all around with different poles. The thinner we choose our sheet metal, the better it is to avoid eddy currents. But of course, if we have a certain length to cover, the thinner the sheets are we take, the more sheets we will need to stack up, so the more work we will have to do, and that drives up our manufacturing cost. Second important factor is also the exact material you need, you use. There are many different qualities of electrical sheets, and also the frequency you drive your motor because these eddy current losses become higher with higher frequency. So this becomes especially tricky if you want a motor that operates over a wide range of RPM. When you go to higher RPM you need to have a high electric frequency and you will increase your ohmic losses in the core due to the eddy currents. So high performance motors usually have a lamination of 0.1 mm sheet thickness. Um, cheaper motors are around 0.5, maybe even thicker, I'm not sure. And for tailored motor at the moment we are considering something around 0.35 mm as sheet thickness. So we need many, many of these sheets. If we have the segmented stator, as I showed you in an earlier video, where we have one stack for each pole, we have 12 poles. We end up for 60 mm of length and 0.35 of sheet thickness, we end up having 2000 little sheet metal pads we have to stack up. So how do we make them? The traditional way to make them is punching, where you have a punch on top and a cutting die in on the bottom where you push in your punch and then cut out uh, little pieces of metal or larger pieces of metal. I mean, it's a very, very common process. Um, the tricky thing about punching is you have your sheet metal thickness, which I have here as T, and you have your clearance between your punch and your die which usually is between 7 and 10 percent of your sheet metal thickness. So if we have 0 0.35 here, we are below 0 0.02 here in the clearance. If you have too low clearance, at some point you get collision between the both parts, which of course is the catastrophe you want to avoid, because it breaks everything. If you have a too big clearance, you will pull down the sheet metal in between that slot which leads then to, to a, a bit a bent edge of, of your cutting which you often see if you use just 
cheap standard washers, look at them and you exactly see from which side the punch went in. With a washer you don't care, but I mean as soon as you have the washer under the screw head, it, it gets flattened down again. But for an electric motor where you really precisely want to stack those layers, it can be tricky. And especially the thinner your material gets, the less stiffness you have, since stiffness is proportional to the thickness power to the three. So it's, it's a really big uh, uh, non-linearity here. So that's, that's the tricky part about punching. So you really have to carefully align your punch and your die. To make this possible, it is usually done by having a huge frame around it. Kind of a mold frame where you have two big uh, linear guides with linear ball bearings which have completely no clearance. So you really have the precision you need and inside that you can align your punch and your die and you put all this assembly into a huge press that presses from the top uh, which has the advantage that if you change the format you can just take all this, that beast out and replace it by another one but I mean that's that's really big and expensive part I got quotations in Switzerland okay Switzerland is expensive in Switzerland for this assembly you pay between 50 and 70 K Swiss francs, euros, US dollars, all the same order of magnitudes, it costs you the same as a car, a big car, a nice car. Uh, the advantage uh, of, of cutting like this is that your little sheets you cut out, they come just aligned through your die. And what is also very often done is that you have a reel here, you pull through your cutting uh, metal, and you roll uh, on the other side, you roll an empty reel, and so you make reel to reel manufacturing, which is very efficient for large quantities. If you have a big enough reels, you can let that machine run for days without having to do anything. Um, yeah, and from the speed, if, if you make thin sheet metals, small parts like this, you can easily get up to 2,000 pieces per minute, which is very productive and good if, if you want to make large quantities of motors, of course. The newer technology is laser cutting. Laser cutting has the advantage that you don't need a cutting die. I mean, just, just making that uh, the punch and the die costs you uh, several thousands uh, if, if you make it in Europe and it's a very complicated part remember this is about the shape we want to cut and to really have this uh, narrow radii uh, and, and so on and you need a positive or negative of this so and you need it in hardened steel there are possibilities to do milling of hardened steel but it's, it's a tricky technology the common technology to make this is uh, wire EDM, electric discharge manufacturing, which is a very slow process. To make one pair of this, you need at least 12 hours. It's a simple machine, but it, it takes a long time. So you need 12 hours to make that cutting die. You need even more time to make the whole frame around it, to align everything, and then you make a new design of motor. With laser cutting, you update the software and you have a new shape. It goes very quickly since you have the CNC guided laser beam and you have your sheet lying on, on a kind of a grid. Sometimes it's also lying of a, on a honeycomb uh, just to support the sheet but keep it as, as free as possible uh, downwards because you're shooting down hot metal hot fluid metal uh, with, with a stream of air. So let's recap the technology. You start with a laser beam where you have your focal point as, as close to the surface as possible, usually on the surface or a little bit below. And that heats up your metal very quickly because you have a huge power density at that, in that little point. You concentrate the, 
hundreds of watts on less than 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 millimeters. And so the metal gets liquid and in the meantime you blow air down through and so you blow out that liquid metal which also has the advantage that if it splashes you can keep it from going upwards because up here you have your focusing lens and you don't want to get metal splashes up there. And with this technology, even with rather cheap laser cutters, you make 100 millimeters per second, which if, if, if you have a segment like this in, in a smaller size, I calculated that I came to 70 millimeters of, of travel to make for cutting one. So <coughs> that was for a 12 pole motor with 60 millimeters of diameter. So if you make a smaller motor, you make about one of these little pads per second, which is by dimensions slower than making 2,000 pieces a minute, right? And usually most laser cutters are made for being loaded with sheets. There are automatic sheet loading technologies, so you can load new sheets, but you have that huge sheet of two meters times and three meters or so, you cut out these little pads and either they fall down into your grid and you have to go pick them up. 2,000 for a small motor, as I said, so that's not really comfortable. Or you, you cut them just to 95% and you leave a little bit so the, the, the parts still are holding on the sheets, but then you have to cut them out manually and stack them manually, so that makes the whole laser cutting process inconvenient for making motors because you have a large quantity of parts. But uh, what I'm thinking of is making a laser cutting machine that operates reel-to-reel, -reel, so it has the same reel-to-reel -reel setup that we have here, and having a little a robot arm grabbing the parts underneath, which is rather easy, you can take a magnet, it's magnetic steel, it's made to be magnetic. So I want to grab these little parts and directly automatically stack them up so I could get the best of both worlds. I mean I don't get the speed, but I get a lot, lot of flexibility and I get a nearly autonomous machine I can leave running for hours which makes me a stacked core instead of having to pick up all these little pieces. So that's why I'm going towards laser cutting. Um, another important point about laser cutting is uh, there's a big dependency on, on materials. I mean, they're very easy to cut materials, uh, organic materials, because they, they just burn and they need low temperatures. Metals are more difficult and metals are reflective, which is a problem because it reflects a part of the laser light <coughs> so it doesn't absorb it, it doesn't make heat. Um, very difficult for laser cutting at um, metals with a very high uh, thermal conductivity like copper or aluminium because the heat just flows away into the sheet instead of uh, being in, in that spot where you want to melt it. But if you are working with steel, which has a quite low thermal conductivity for metals at least, and if you have thin metal sheets, then the laser is, is very affordable nowadays. CO2 lasers able to cut 0.5 mm steels are able for a few thousand uh, euros. So that's, it, it becomes more and more affordable. So that's the reason why we plan to build such a machine that can do reel-to-reel -reel cutting of, of motor parts. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a comment if you have questions and see you next time.